Hey, whoa, my goodness. Morning, everybody. Look at you. Morning, <laughs> everybody. What does that mean? I thought, were we not dressing up this year? You always get on my back about not being dressed up for Christmas. Look, I have spent over six minutes trying to find a Santa hat <laughs> in this new house. Uh-huh. And I can't, Nick. I'm sorry. Well, but you look incredible. You look incredible. Thank you. You'll notice that this is the 200th anniversary singlet, which I've crossed out the 200 and I've written Xmas on. It's so, a great, it's a versatile shirt, isn't it's it? It's versatile. You could wear this to a party. You could wear this to a funeral. You could wear this to the supermarket. I would like to see you wearing that to a funeral. Well, out of all those. Out of I'm not those saying three. it would be appropriate. I'm just saying that you could. Yeah, you could. I mean, look, you look great. Thank you. I appreciate that. And ultimately, there, if I'm there at the funeral to pay tribute to someone, I think it doesn't matter what I'm wearing, right? It's the gesture. No, but if I know anything about funerals, and I've only been to like three, okay, it's that Pretty good if there is an opportunity for you to steal the limelight, <laughs> uh, you should take it. It's funny. We haven't been to the same funeral, and I wonder what that dynamic would be like if you and I both turned up to a funeral. Yeah. There'd be a non-zero chance we'd be doing bits. Oh, uh, we'd we'd probably be asked to to <laughs> do a how bit. Close we are I would imagine thing. to the thing. If you invited corpse. me to like your like second <laughs> cousin's funeral, neither of us yep. that invested, or like a former former coworker, that sort of thing. There's a decent chance we'd be having some jokes. Yeah, not not a high probability of me inviting you to my second cousin's funeral. There's not a high probability of me going to that. Okay. Uh, I don't even know if I have any. I probably do. I've probably slept with them. Okay. Well, that's allowed. That's with that's within the you normal, know. normal bounds. You know, I, I, I the other night I started a playlist. I actually didn't realize that I had started this playlist until I checked my phone a few days later on Spotify. And I started a playlist very late at night called My Funeral, and there is one song on there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what's, yeah. Uh, what's on there? Videotape by it's, Radiohead. It's a, well, no, it's it's an Aphex Twin song that's just, there's no lyrics. <laughs> okay. It's just, just it's, a vibe. The song, this top, the song is actually called Three. It's just called okay. Three. Right. Um, and it's just a beautiful, it just like, I imagine, because I imagine that's how I will ascend to heaven. Right. With this music. Okay. So is yeah. this something that you keep playing, you know, just when you're going about your daily life, just in case, just so like, we, we've talked about this previously, the embarrassment of being run over by a car and, and the pedestrian nearby picking up the earpods and being like, wow, was he listening to his yeah. own podcast? Yes. Do you, are you now trying to steer the other direction where you're always playing your funeral song just in case so that there's never that embarrassment? That's a good point. No, I wasn't thinking that, but I was thinking that like, I mean, no one's going to be able to DJ my funeral better than me. And I hate the idea of someone playing a song at my funeral that I don't like. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm just trying to get prepared. Just get it ready. I mean, screw the will. Get the playlist sorted. Yeah, I think you do a pretty good job. I think Casper would do a pretty good job. Okay, thank I you. I think maybe Ben could as well. But yeah. I, just want, I just want that last bit of dying control before I... You know. How many podcasts of comedians interviewing each other do you want during the reception or the wake? I think two. Just two. like not. I don't want you. Don't want to overrag the pudding. No, but a little bit of Joe List, a little bit of what Marin. Wow, who do you want? Look at you. Look at you remembering Joe List. Oh, I still remember the name. I haven't checked him out. Oh, okay, that's all right. But well, I, you know, I that's half, that. that's halfway there. That's love, man. Honestly, I, I don't remember anyone that you've ever recommended me. <laughs> no, and you've never listened to anything I've ever recommended. So nah. it's, it's just like water off a duck's back. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are you drinking? My man. Cass Lager right here. Cass Lager. I have Korean's a, um, finest. I have a world's best gin in a raspberry tonic. Is that what it's called? It No, it's called, it's a different type of gin, but it won the world's best gin last year. New okay, Zealand well, brand, yeah. It's uh, it's very pink. Well, that's again the raspberry tonic. It's fitting fitting with your outfit. Are you cold? No. In your tank top there? No. It's sixteen degrees. Can I just say you've got more shoulder hair than I would have expected? Thank you. Yeah, I'm okay. uh, growing it out, just trying something new because you know for years haven't, and now I'm thinking yeah. let's give it a crack. 
It's all that uh, tea that you've been building up over the last few years at the <laughs> yeah. gym. And injecting, yeah. You're, you've kind of hit puberty number two. <laughs> Second puberty. The encore the, puberty. <laughs> the, the sequel. The squeakle. Yeah. The squeakle. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, there's a bit going around. I, I, we've talked previously about how shoulder hair is not a thing that I really expected to be part of my life. But I'm trying, you know, we're talking end of year stuff. I'm trying in 2023 to come to accept and love myself for who my shoulders may be. Well, you don't want you don't want too much love. You want a healthy amount. <laughs> I always like to keep like a healthy dose of self hatred in there because yeah. I think that keeps me grounded. How much is that? What's a healthy dose? Like twenty percent. Okay. Not okay. too much, but like I wanna, I wanna, I wanna maintain. I would never want to lose that that voice in my head that tells me I'm a. I'm a little bitch, you know, I want, I would, I want that. I want a little of that. I want it to, I want it to quieten down a little bit, but like, I don't, I don't want it to lose it all together. It's part of my personality. Yeah. And I think people would be very disconcerted if you liked yourself. Like there'd be a lot of people going around like, wow, Michael's changed. He's really, he seems positive and optimistic. And it's not good. No one wants that. Yeah. It would sort of ruin the brand. Yeah. Uh, Now are you getting into the Christmas spirit? Or are you about to do the intro? Well, I'm I'm open to both options. I was about All to right. intro, but maybe maybe let's yeah, let's wait. Let's keep All people right. on edge. Welcome to Deep Ford, everybody. Thank you so much for being here on this the probable last episode of our year, and also the much anticipated Christmas special. Yes, we have music coming up. I'm very excited to hear what has been produced by my friend sitting through the internet. In Melbourne, Australia, Michael Zabrecki. How we doing? Yo, yo, ho, ho. Hello, welcome. little Christmas, yo. I loved it. I felt the spirit. I felt the energy. Yeah. Michael. And you didn't introduce yourself. Well, I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi. Sad Nick. Saint Nick, thank you very much. And uh, you, as we just said, are home. Tell me about your Christmas spirit, because I assume that you were there for Jesus's sake. <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, you kind of just outed me there, but that's all right. We didn't really discuss that. But well, um, Do you want to um, not be home? Well, I just, I was toying up. So, okay. So, yes, I am in, I'm back in Australia. Um, uh, earlier than we expected, um, we kind of. We made. We've been traveling for six months, and we kind of we made the choice to come back home um, for you know various reasons. I'm not sure how I want to, much I want to get into some personal, some professional, uh, but we made the choice to come back home. It felt right. You know, we we kind of anticipated that we would be away for you know. I think you know I was planning anywhere between six months and two years. I, you know, was kind of expecting in my head. So we're at the the very minimum part of that, which is it's a little bit it's a little bit sad in a way. Um, you know, we both feel like we we kind of wanted to to extend our time or at least f- uh, kind of cement ourselves in a place for um, at least um, a few more months than we than we did. But we had a very very good trip. And things have worked out very well for us both. We've, you know, we've both managed to get jobs. I'm starting tomorrow, my new job. Yeah, wow. Um, so it's kind of worked out for us. We feel very privileged to have been able to take this kind of break in our careers and in our personal lives and come back into, you know, good jobs. Um, so we're very lucky in that sense. Um, I think there is a, there is like a feeling of, um, you know, uh, I don't want to use the word failed. But there is that feeling. There is a feeling of like we didn't quite, you know, go to, um, you know, get to live in Portugal or whatever, whatever we planned. Um, but at the end of the day, we still had a pretty amazing time. We went to eight or nine different countries. Yeah. Um, you know, we got we got engaged. We got, you know, we, we yeah. Uh, it's funny. Uh, Lauren and I hadn't actually lived together apart from this trip and I was working out um, – I was doing the maths in my head, and I realized that for a quarter of our relationship, we've been traveling together, yeah, wow. which is pretty wild. And we haven't killed each other, and we're you know still very much in love and all that bullshit. And um, <laughs> all that is to say that, yes, I am home. Please don't hit me up. I'm not ready to speak to anyone. 
<laughs> Did you want me to do an intro where I don't out you? No, no, no. I, I, I was just, I was kind of, there's a, there's a nervousness that I have about, you know, I've only told like close friends that we're back. Uh, and that's because I have a little bit of, I don't, it's not anxiety. I don't like using that word, but like, I don't, I, I don't want to just go back straight into life and catch up with people. I don't know. There's yeah, like you're a decompressing. barrier. I guess that's what it is. It's like I have to quarantine myself socially. Um, and I think that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah. I mean, it is very recent as of this recording. Like you've only just got back two, in. which Yeah, two uh, days ago. Yeah, it does not surprise me that there's still a bit of disorientation there. Um, particularly given the, um, I suppose, the cultural context here of like the sort of places you've been living in and then back into... Australian life have you felt differently about the world that was normal until very recently now that you've spent some time away from it do you by the world that is normal do you mean Australia home? like Melbourne home yeah. yeah well yeah so this is this is part of the decompression slash quarantine thing it is eerie to us to both of us that how familiar everything is and how um, how we've just gone straight back into the swing of things. You know, we had one day of of kind of jet laggy stuff, but even then we stayed up with, you know, Lauren's parents and had a drink and it's, it is, it is wild. You know, you think that there would be a lot of, you know, a bit more time or, you know, there'd be a bit, a bit more of a transition between, you know, living out of a suitcase for six months in developing parts of the world where it's completely different to where you're, you're used to growing up. Yeah. Um, but it, but it hasn't felt like that. And that's, that's kind of spooks me as well. Like it just feels immediately familiar. And I don't know, I think I wanted the little, the, like the afterglow of, of travel to last a little longer, but it just, it just feels like normal again. That's fascinating. I mean, partially that has to be a result of the, the suddenness of it, right? Where particularly if you're going straight back to work tomorrow You'll yep. find yourself in an office environment. I think maybe tomorrow's the day where you'll feel the contrast more, right? Where <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden you have other people asking things of you, expecting things of you, deadlines to do that kind of stuff, which has been a framework that for the most part you haven't had to live under for six months. So yes. I think when it's no longer a self-guided life anymore and it's back to interoperability with other people's schedules and <laughs> that sort of thing i think that's probably when you'll feel the the the, the distance of it rather yeah, than just definitely. being like well I'm, I'm living in a different house again but i lived in 10 different houses in the past six months so you know what's another yeah and it's not like i i haven't worked with these people before it's not like you you leave a place for six months and then go back to it and everyone knows your story this is a fresh slate they're meeting me on a fresh slate so Yes, that, that, that travel is part of my story for the last six months, but they don't know that and they don't care and why would they? Um, and, yeah, so I, I guess it's like uh, that might shock me a little bit, but I guess the other, the other side of this is that, you know, we were craving familiarity and, you know, we hadn't been able to walk into a, a you know, a grocery store and order, you know, or, or just buy a packet of crisps without – there being some la some barrier, some obstacle in terms of language or culture or whatever, and that's that's those, those little micro obstacles that happen on a day to day basis for six months. They can stack up, yeah. and I'm not saying that it wasn't it was unbearable, but you do start to create cr crave that familiarity and that that comfort. And you know, I think you know the first day that we were back here in Melbourne, you know, I went to just go buy you know, a drink from. Um, the supermarket and I almost you know I could feel my my muscle memory trying you know to gear up to say to remember the foreign word of the place that I'm in to say thank you or please but I then I didn't need to do that yeah you know I could just I could just use the words that I know yeah um, you didn't because so, you tend to treat people poorly when you're in those kind of uh, hospitality settings but you yeah, knew the words you should have said Yes, and in a way, because the the person behind the um, behind the counter was 
of Asian appearance, it sounded a little racist and condescending when I said ni hao to them <laughs> in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, what are you getting it, at? It, it comes across differently, yeah. And they're like, I'm, t- I'm, I'm Korean. Yeah. I'm like, well, you know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> are we leaving that bit in the final edit or not? <laughs> Why not? Is that, okay. is that bad? Does well, that not reflect I mean, well? I think it's clear that we're joking. Um, I'm joking. The... Um, the adjustment period notwithstanding, how do you... You've said that you felt a hint of what others might call failure about that. Do you mm. think that's a passing thing? Or do you, like is that tied up in the idea of it, of this transition of, as you're readjusting? Or do you think you really would hold on to this with a regret that it wasn't longer? I think there is... I I don't I'm not sure about regret. I'm pretty good at not regretting things because I can t- contextualize them. I think if we knew what we knew, if we know if we knew before we left what we know now, um, th- I, we would do things a lot differently. But that's just life. That's just how life works. Yeah. Um. We can't know those things. We did you know as enough uh, as much research as as we could um, before we left and. And again, it's not like it's not like we necessarily needed to come back immediately. There are other factors, but I think for both of us, um, there was a. Set, it was like it's just expectation versus um, the reality, as everything in life is. And I think the expectation and the the hopes that you put on it, uh, when it kind of changes course um and and doesn't necessarily materialize as as that original expectation there is a sense of like ah oh, i wish that was different but uh, look we we still we still had an incredible time we've had you know um we've seen so much of the world now that you know most people have never gotten to to experience so i'm i'm just trying to focus on the the gratitude for that yeah um and we you know part of the reason what we are coming back as well is because you know we've been we have this opportunity to get this amazing place together um and with the rental market being so dire in melbourne yeah. it's like we we are actually walking into like a, a pretty um, pretty nice situation for ourselves, yeah. Um, and it's going to be pretty comfortable. So, look, there's just there's just there's pros and cons with everything. It's bittersweet, and it's like bittersweet in the truest sense. Like we are happy to be home. We do kind of wish, you know, part of us wishes that we were still traveling, but you know, we can travel again, and uh, yeah. there's a lot to look forward to for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Well said. Can you give an example of like one of the the micro things that you didn't know? that if you knew at the start would have impacted how you planned things or what you did? I, yeah. Um, well, I think part, our goal was to set up some some freelance work um, for both of us, some income streams uh, that could sustain our travel um, at least for a, a period. And, and, you know, we weren't expecting to, to earn as much as we do in Australia, um, but we thought if we can just earn enough to get by, um, then that would be that would be fine. So we, um, we just find we just found it harder to get regular work coming through, and our big learning from that is that if you are making the move from a salary job to freelance work, you need to, and especially if you're traveling on the road, you need to have set those things up concretely before you go. You need to have recurring regular clients. And you need to have it for you need to establish yourself for at least a year and maybe two. Um, and I think trying to find work while your back's against the wall, while you're on the road and living out of a suitcase, is just not viable. It's it's not going to. It's very it's very hard. You know, I, yeah. I interviewed for multiple jobs. I you know had multiple Zoom interviews um, for jobs, and some of those were great, and uh, some of those some of those didn't work out for you know, practical reasons, you know, a lot of these companies that are advertising for remote roles, they don't really mean remote fully. Yeah. They don't, they're a bit Pop into the office icky. once a week, but you know, you can spend the rest working from home. And it's like, well, I can't do the once a week either. <laughs> the com- companies are a bit icky about that. So, you know, when, when we were going for these jobs and this is Lauren as well, when we we're going for these jobs and it was getting to final interview stage and okay, can we talk referees and all that? When, 
when we are having those conversations, the com- those companies were like, okay, but so when are you really going to be back though? And when I couldn't give them an answer, that was a red flag to them. And they're like, well, you know, if we've got another candidate here that's, you know, just as good Around or the not as good, but yeah. then then I'm just going to do that because it's easier. It's just a headache for them, which I, which I get to an extent, but I think we'll see the world really opening up and becoming, I, I don't think the world is fully remote now. Companies are still in that teething stage where they're a little bit wary and some of them are even trying to get people back into the office yeah. you know, and really trying to sell that. Um, but I think the world isn't quite ready for like a, okay, you can, as long as you get the work done, you know, um, you can work from anywhere. Yeah. I do know a couple of people that are in that place and have succeeded at it, but it seems to be the exception. I think you're right that there is a conservatism in, in sort of business office environments still where the unknown is a risk factor and they tend to be risk averse. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not hugely surprised, but it's a shame that they didn't give you the chance to try, you know, to prove that you could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all it's all lessons and uh yeah, I mean, yeah. Life life is pretty fucking good. So yeah. no and I, I think um, you know, from my perspective, like what an amazing um accomplishment, as you say, to have spent the six months away to have done so yeah. with a partner and not only not killed each other but got engaged that's the opposite yeah. of killing um and <laughs> <laughs> come back clearly uh more worldly more informed more excited by the prospects of what's to come like i don't think there's anyone looking at that that would say it's a failure i think it's it's a really admirable and exciting thing that you pulled off so i'm i'm very happy for you for doing it and i'm very happy to see what happens now you're back yeah thanks man i appreciate that um, how are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. It's been, I, I feel like this is a, a maybe a podcast in which we talk a little bit of our years. Let's do um, that. But I got some bits and pieces of um, mm. news and things after this. Yep. But um, it's interesting in contrast because I think my year has been a difficult one in some respects because the, so we've been in a, in a, development phase trying to get the next show off the ground and that process in New Zealand this year has been quite tumultuous um, due to more industry factors and, and international factors even totally. but it just it, it has brought it brought into like harsh relief sort of the the challenges as you've discovered of the freelance life where if mm. if the um, industry, it changes in a different direction, then all of a sudden your stability disappears. Um, right. So I've I've had a year in which uh, probably been working on five different TV shows, trying to get them going, and none of them have gone yet. And mm. all of that is time that you're investing, often unpaid time that you're putting into a thing to try and get it to a point where funding is you know secured um pushing up hills you through bureaucracies through like creative partnerships to try and get it to a place where you then have a job and that can be a a fairly draining experience when you're (laughs) trying to find the next thing and it doesn't always come through so um Mm. Luckily, I've had other opportunities. My video game work, which um, has been a a bit of a safety net, has been relatively consistent, at least through the second half of this year. And that has kept me, you know, with a little bit of money coming through. But so much of this job is betting on yourself and on hoping that if you just stick at it and that you can weather the storms and, and weather the bullshit, you can last you know to the next port when the the next show comes through and you get steady work again yeah it's it's high high risk high reward that's it and you are you are playing the long game and there would there there will be a huge payoff for you but like those i mean people i remember tom hanks saying um you know if he could go back and tell him his younger self something it would be to not worry and I, I just think, well, I mean, it's because you fucking made it. But like, people who are in artists, especially who are, and, and include you in that, art, artists who 
apply, plugging away at their craft, you know, you know, kind of perfecting it, getting better, you know, taking the, the little jobs, the big jobs, th- those people don't know what the end of the tunnel is. They are yeah. literally just in the dark and you, and you, you just have to keep going for the love of it. And I just, I respect that immensely. I think I, I, you know, anyone who does that makes that choice in their life and for their career. I think that's the greatest, most courageous thing that you could do. And you're obviously hugely talented and you, you already done like courageous things. You already moved to New Zealand. Like it hurts my feelings that you did that, <laughs> but like you are, you, you're a Kiwi now and that's just your life and you'll just die in New Zealand probably. <laughs> and that's, that's fine. We're all coming to terms with it, but like that is a huge thing. Like you've established yourself there and you are clearly getting better. It's not, also, this is, this sounds like you've lost out on something. You are like, you, you obviously have irons in the fire. I, I, just, I also just watched half of good grief season two. It took me long enough on the plane. Oh my God. <laughs> that, that, that shit is fucking awesome. Thank you. That's that very shit kind. is fucking awesome. We'll, we'll talk about that on another episode once we I've finished talk it. About that. But um, I mean, you, you're, you are killing it. You are absolutely killing it. That's very kind of you. I, I think it's, it's when you say it's courageous, I do feel like there has to be acknowledged that I, I've been fortunate enough to have a safety net where I, I, you know, have a family that I can rely on where if this all absolutely fell apart, I could move back to Adelaide and, and, you know, <laughs> my parents would put up with me for a bit until I got shit back together you know so like not everyone has that and and it does mean that it's it it favors unfortunately people that are in a better position in order to pursue this kind of shit but when i look at you also have to you have to also have to factor in the pride element so yes you could do that but (laughs) pride pride and ego (laughs) pride and ego needs to be factored in yeah that's fair um but it's it's interesting because like one of my my friends and and co-writers is um, doing some pretty amazing stuff in the U.S. at the moment, and the contrast between like the U.S. Hollywood kind of systems and the New Zealand one it has really become obvious because here in New Zealand it's just so small, like yeah. there's just not that much money for the arts. There's two channels tops, um, the audience are getting all of the international content. So their expectations for what a show looks like, you know, what the scope of something is, is sky high. But the money that's available for a New Zealand production is minuscule. Like we're we're fighting over like six figures for a whole season of something. And and it's, you know, that's the catering budget of Game of Thrones, you know, (laughs) like that's how much they spend on horses. Um, So... The, the industry here... Even Wait, if, horses, horses are part of the catering budget? Yeah. I mean, you really want good quality horse flank. You don't want, okay. like, sort of the offcuts or anything. No, oh, they're really, they're really uh, doing it over there, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they went full medieval um, method. So there was a lot of, a lot okay. of like, eating um, pheasant and that sort of thing. It's, it's a method cast and crew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't often hear about a method crew. <laughs> 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 where everyone's lighting things with flames and <laughs> yeah, yeah you're a, a, a got uh method makeup artist Correct. that's not gonna yeah. be it's Just like so i'm gonna make your, up your face yeah i'm gonna make your lips pop a little bit with blood yeah um but the, you know the, the contrast of so good grief as you mentioned is you know decently well received like it has it has fans people like it um even overseas and the approach for success in america is let's make this thing until it's not successful anymore let's push it as long as it let's do nine seasons of the office even when the star's Mm. gone let's keep going you know that's Mm. the model that they've lent into and in new zealand there's just not the money for that there's not the money that a hit continues so every single time you um, you know, finish a show, you have to fight to get the next season of it, even if it's successful. So it's just like a very different world here. And it, it means that you're constantly back at the bottom of the mountain trying to climb it again. So, um, yeah, this year this year has been a very sort of eye-opening lull where, it, you know, it has tested me in terms of the commitment to finding new projects to pushing forward at, at stuff, even when I'm sick of the shit 
and yeah. and you just have to say you know take Tom Hope's Tom Hanks's advice and hope that you know you, you don't need to worry you will about be it America's and work out. <laughs> I will be yeah. ultimately um, you know a five time SNL guest host. That's I think you that's will, the context. He I was think you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, do you feel like you've struggled emotionally with that? Yeah, I think I think there have definitely been periods where I've felt uh, low about it because so much of it's out of your control. That's the hard thing. Yeah. Like I can put the effort in, but when it's not up to you to secure your own success when you don't know, you know, what you're fighting against in terms of what other projects are out there, what other money's being asked for, what else does a network have on offer? What's, mm. you know, the appetite for this versus international content that they could just license for a quarter of the money, you know? Yeah. It's just a vacuum of of um where you just throw your your hopes and dreams into it and wait to see what comes out. So it's that where you're like, okay, well, my four previous attempts have stalled out or they're in they're pending or we're waiting to find out or they didn't like that so we've got to rewrite stuff or you know mm. the, the process of it sometimes weighs down and then there's it's days exhausting. where i'm like i just don't have anything to do today and that's that's mm. weird as well where you're like okay i've got nothing to do so do mm. i have the energy to start something else yeah. What pathway would that take? What am I passionate about doing? What, you know, story do I want to tell? Or do I try and just like give myself a break and not feel guilty about having a day where I don't do something, even though it doesn't earn me any money, you know? That's it's impossible. A, it's impossible. it's a weird, it's a weird vibe. And the freelance life has always been one of like peaks and troughs where when I'm busy, I'm, I'm really busy because there's lots yeah. to do and lots of, deadlines and then there's times when it's a bit more like holding pattern but going mm. into a year where there's been a lot of nothing is is disconcerting mm. it's Meanwhile, hard the to cost of living well, going higher. yeah and then you're spending that 200 dollars in the supermarket owning a house <laughs> yeah. is getting further and further away yeah so well i'm sh i'm sure uh, wallace cinemas would take you back as <laughs> deputy manager <laughs> Any day, Nick. Excuse me, I was front of house supervisor. I didn't make it to deputy well, manager. You've been gone a long time, Nick. I think you need That's to work true. your way back up to that. Presumably they're paying six figures. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I don't know. I, like, we've, Casey and I have had discussions about this year and, and you know, he he's sort of in the opposite boat where he's in a, a white collar office environment in a high paying field with too much work you know and and a year in which Ooh. he's been over busy and looking for more downtime and then comes home to me and i've like fucked around all day <laughs> or like yeah. waiting to find shit out and the discussion that, of that like, to me is would be the worst part like for the disparity being, there being kc or being me well, being you obviously sucks, um, but <laughs> like just that feeling that you're not like I hate the feeling that someone would be coming home and like I they fit they think I've not done anything that day. Yeah, I mean I, it's this always is like high school stuff. It is, I'm but it's like by. it's it's not wrong. Like I, I do a lot of like the housework stuff and I'm cooking dinner and that sort of thing. So I find ways yeah. in which it. You know, like he does rely on me when he's busy because he's so busy. Mm. So it, it works out. But there is definitely like a, a conversation about the sustainability of that sort of thing um, and right. what that looks like. And and certainly mm. if if next year was in the same place where nothing tended to go, we might end up discussing moving back to Australia because he could do civil engineering in Australia and get paid twice as much as he could in New Zealand. And that might be enough to well, balance it out a bit, you know. Don't end incentivize your downfall to me, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Now you're rooting. Now against I'm going to be success. rooting against you. <laughs> That's no yeah. good. Well, you know, these are the conversations you have to have to to be prepared for. It. Yeah, that sucks, man. But I, I like you're so talented. Like I, not to blow smoke, but like you are, you, it, I, it will obviously work out. Well, thank you. There's like, no such thing I, as a guarantee, but. 
Look, it would just I, be one of the. You'll look back on it with hindsight as one of those, you know, rough periods. But, yeah, you know, and I it think will turn around. I think the other thing is we were so lucky with Good Grief to get that our first show, our first proposal, we got funded, and it just happened overnight. We became TV creators, and you had I the think beginner's luck at the we casino. Did. We did, <laughs> and um, and this time around, I think makes you appreciate the accomplishment you know not that i was not grateful or not aware of the luck and the fortune no, you, you know yeah but like this time around whenever the next one does get over the line i think i'll have that appreciation of like what that slog was and what that effort required in order to get yeah. there because it's it's not there's no guarantees there's no yeah there's no guarantees and i'm, I'm fortunate enough to have partnered up with you know extremely talented people and have doors open from other people's success. So, you know, with Grace now starring on a fucking Fox sitcom in the US, yeah, you know, she's meeting different kinds of people and, you know, maybe there's opportunities Trickle there that, that avoid, well, exactly, that avoid some yeah. of the bottleneck in New Zealand. So, look, as you say, you've got to remain um, hopeful for success. But it does, it, it's been a different kind of year for me. Yeah. A bit of a bit of a um, <laughs> bit of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Melancholic, yeah. Uh, malaise start for this well, podcast. Couple. I mean, of, it's end of year. Just sound like know, a couple of losers. Drink. This is the first time we've drunk on the pod in about seven months, so maybe this is what yes. the alcohol is bringing out. Only if <laughs> we just get depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's really oh. kind of um, obvious now that we see it in it, hindsight. It's cliche that we, you know, just just get immediately get sad around Christmas. <laughs> yeah, can you put on some love FX it. twin, please? I love it. Let's do it now. Let's get into some fun seggies. How about okay. we do that? Well, speaking of um, depressing news, Michael, have you been following the Twenty Three and Me leak? No. Were you telling me about this though? No, I don't think I've mentioned this to you. Oh, this has come up in something. Anyway, please tell me everything. Well, uh, 23andMe is the um, genetic testing company. Um, are, you, are you familiar mm. with them independent of this? The show? No, it's a, it's a company. Okay. Wait, a show? Is no, there they... a show? I th- I'm thinking of like the 20, like you, they film people every 23 years and check in on them. Oh, 7up. Oh, uh, that one. Yeah. No, it's okay. not that. This is like Ancestry.com. Different. This is like a, a DNA testing company which uh, you, you do a like a cheek swab, I think, or a spit sample or something like that, send it away to them. They scan your DNA and then they find relatives and they connect you to your ancestry. And they, they can say, look, you came from here. You came from there. Um, okay. DNA testing um, uh, software, I, I guess, a service that um, I suppose is more popular maybe with a slightly older generation who are looking at that kind of ancestry, you know, where they came from. Um well, there was a huge hack, basically, and a trove of, of user data um, was stolen from this company and 6.9 million people of their 13 or 14 odd million users have had data stolen and now leaked, including DNA and genetic information. So, uh, look, the, the details of what happened here are sort of irrelevant. I guess what, what I want to know, Michael, is what do you think of people's DNA being leaked? You know, we've had data leaks. We've had fucking Optus's leak. We've had Dimmick's leak. You know, we're, we're used to seeing an email address be compromised. We're talking now healthcare information. We're talking about your actual genome. We're talking about whether you have diabetes. A whole bunch of innate human characteristics here now out there on the dark web you know for anyone to use or or compromise but how would anyone use how is this valuable to anyone well it it, i mean this is the question i suppose part of it is what do you do with genetic information part of it is a, a question of privacy and part of it is the responsibility of the service to secure stuff if you're taking your dna and making promises that it's being held securely. Um, Now there's sensitive health data out there 
you know, attached to your name, address, and contact details and saying, hi, you've got type 2 diabetes. Hi, you've got celiac disease, you know. This is this is mm. medical information out there on on the web. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I just I'm struggling to care. Like I <laughs> I don't think that I I don't think that I would care. Like maybe it's because I'm obviously super fit and healthy and you know have incredible DNA. I kind of want people to know, you know, the <laughs> stuff that I'm made of, but I, I just maybe in the year 2085, this could be an issue when we're kind of genetically engineering, uh, you know, people like in like a Gattaca style um, engineering. But like, I don't really, un I don't really understand why this is an issue. Like, I, this well, what about breach, here? Or, if I introduce the 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 potential bad result here, it's it from one angle here, it introduces the risk of racial targeting. So one uh, bad actor responsible had already posted a sample of data they'd stolen from 23andMe, describing it as containing a million data points about Ashkenazi Jews, and people of Chinese descent. So you are now looking at like racial um, you know, bigotry, being able to then identify the names and addresses of people that they might be bigots against. And now all of a sudden, a random fucking neo-Nazi on the internet knows where you live. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, I mean, it's it's funny to me that there's a, a neo-Nazi out there who would also try and get information from a data leak in order to be more racist. Well, I that's mean... That's like a... a why is that? Diligent kind of racism. <laughs> why? I mean, if you're, if you're like a proactive bigot right you're already like stalking people or you know going to mosques or you know whatever kind of object of um attention you're fixated on right this is an easier way to do it surely than like getting out there and stalking people yeah i guess so i mean because it's interesting with with jewish being both a religion and i guess a a race of of people yeah that there's probably a lot of people who don't identify as Jewish who are Jewish in their DNA. But this is like another level of racism that I just completely do not understand. Like, you know, obviously going back to like the Holocaust or whatever, like the 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 idea that if you have Jewishness in your DNA that someone would hate you more. Like I, it's, it's so like biblical and outdated that I'm just like how – like this is – like – Conf so confusing to me well i mean it's it's the it's the eugenics thing right like it's the there's something flawed about these people so we don't want them right, right? right, right. like but the idea that that's this what, is just like a, a judgment call <laughs> where it's like that's what the funny thing about racism is that the funny thing about racism <laughs> clip it <laughs> the funny thing about racism is that it's it just it just exemplifies people's lack of evolution like a lack of understanding towards evolution. It's just evolution. Like people have historically thought that black or, you know, white people have been, you know, thought that black people were lesser than them or, and it's like, they just, they just evolved differently to you for a, for a little bit. Like, yeah, it is. It's just, it's just so, it's so. Well, in fact, it, it's, isn't it the other way around? You evolved differently to them, right? Like white people sure. m migrated North. This is this is maybe completely wrong. My vague memory of it, actually, from the pathogenesis book that we were reading, was that mm, the, yeah, the yeah. people migrated north up into Europe and in the different climates up there, adjusted over over time, and then their skin colors all evolved up, and you know, due to leaving right. Africa. Um, so it's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's like if everyone had a really solid understanding of evolution that that would be like the best way to cure racism i think that's a, it's pretty, a science pretty strong argument to be honest clip that then clip <laughs> okay that. we won't clip the last bit <laughs> we'll clip this one <laughs> um look i didn't have uh, a great deal more to say about this but i think we're it, it has become more and more common these days to hear of your data being leaked i think you're in a position where you've said that you don't really give a shit i no. tend to be more um 
uh, alarmed than most, I would say. But um, mm. I think we've crossed into a new threshold now when, you know, genetic data is out there for people to use. So I would encourage, there is one sort of takeaway here. Um, they attempted, <laughs> just they just updated the terms and conditions uh, of their service, where if you are going to be an ongoing user, you uh, have uh, opted into arbitration and, and waived away any rights to class action lawsuits. So I would Good. encourage if you or anyone listening knows someone, a family member who used 23andMe, please tell them to opt out of that arbitration change. They've tried to sneak it through with a 30-day window by the end of December. Please tell them to go and, and email 23andMe and opt out of that arbitration because there's going to be lawsuits about this. And I think it's in their best interest to not have that right taken away from them by the con uh, company that fucked up. So, um, yeah, that's my PSA for today. Okay. Yeah, sorry for not caring about that more. Well, that's okay. I'll just get a sample of your blood and leak it on the internet and see what people say. Do it. I don't, like, you could do it. <laughs> Michael... How are we feeling myth wise? Oh, um, let's let's well, because it's the festive season, I thought we could do some some merry myths. Oh, some like merry that. myths. That sounds fun. Some some merry, merry myths. Some specific, play the jingle. Do you have a different jingle? I can add sleigh bells to the original <laughs> pre existing one. Perfect. <laughs> I'll do it after this. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Very festive. I heard the bells. <laughs> I hope I do them now. <laughs> yeah, that's me forcing you to do it. Should I kick us off Please. with the first Merry Myth yeah. of 2023? First right. ever as People. well. Don't act like this has come up before. <laughs> People around this time of year like to talk about their favorite Christmas movies. And, uh -huh. you know, often you see lists on BuzzFeed, sure. social yeah. media. People like to... People like to brag about their favorite Christmas movies. And one thing that really miffs me, Nick, one Please. thing that Mary miffs me, Mary much, is that <laughs> is How when people... <laughs> when <laughs> it's people... Gonna be... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get sickly soon. Yeah. When people say that Die Hard is their favorite Christmas movie, okay? I, I look... I, I I know that when people say that they're they're trying to separate themselves from the pack. They go, "Oh, I actually like Die Hard because it features Christmas." But it's obviously not a Christmas movie, and that's not what people mean by that. They don't mean what is the favorite your favorite movie that features Christmas. I don't think you're special for saying that. And I wish that people would stop. Just pick a movie that is specifically about Christmas. There's literally millions of them. <laughs> stop trying to be cool with the Die Hard. I'm sure Die Hard's fine. I don't think I've ever seen it. What? But like, just, oh, I don't care about action movies, dude. Like, whatever. Bruce Willis. Yeah, but like, sure, fine. sure. Like, don't go see a new one. But you've never seen Die Hard? Not even, like, on I, TV? I've probably seen it on TV and didn't give a fuck then. Okay. <laughs> but it's not a Christmas movie. I know this is a little naff, a little basic, but I just really wish people would cool it with the Die Hard for the Christmas. I think actually what's uh, what I'm reading here is a deep sincerity in your core that feels aggrieved by people suggesting this as like a anarchic you know ironic thing when what you really love is christmas and you Thank don't you. like You've... the disrespect they're putting on its name by throwing die hard out there when as you say there are others that actually celebrate jesus in the way that you want so i think once this is again, actually Nick... coming from a really sincere place once again you've taken the words out of my mouth swallowed them and made them better and then put them out into my mouth again. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. This uh, beer is really starting to kick in. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> this I've gone from sad to vulgar very quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I do. I do have a deep love of Christmas movies. Uh, we're talking Elf. We're talking um, other ones. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's I, literally millions. I, like, I, I love. I love Christmas movies. I think they should be. They should be treated with like a, a sanctity and a respect. Um, and a, and a and a kind of a, an honestness. Um, and then uh, I'm running out of words here. Uh, I think we got a, your point. Genuine, yeah. Okay, whatever the fuck. Sincerity. Um, sincerity. That's the word I was looking for. So just just pick a normal Christmas movie, you fucking twat. <laughs> Good myth. Reasonable myth. Okay. Um, Reasonable myth. Okay, I have I have a I have a myth to send back to you. Oh, an evidence-based myth. This is evidence-based myth. So I've just sent a video to you in uh, in Messenger, um, and I would like you to watch and take it in. Oh, boy. oh no! Oh, that sucks. Yep. So what we've right. what we've got here, Michael. Let me set the scene. Casey and I out some... for a nice. Vietnamese meal, mm-hmm. having some fur, mm. having some crispy squid, having a really nice time. This is maybe December 4th. And then into the Vietnamese restaurant come a group of Christian carolers. 12, maybe 14 people singing Feliz Navidad loudly no. to us in the Vietnamese restaurant. Michael, here's my myth. Carolers... Uninvited carolers, particularly racially incoherent ones. I don't get hearing Feliz Navidad sung by a Filipino Christian church in a Vietnamese restaurant. It just hurt my brain a little bit. So I feel like this is probably a request a caroling kind of situation rather than a walk into a restaurant and sing at people when we're all just having conversations and eating our food and then they have the nerve to walk around and ask for donations they wanted they wanted yeah. money myth for Michael. what myth for the privilege of having heard their unrequested carol no that's bullshit you just ambushed my lunch you ambushed me I don't, sonically I, I don't have any more to say because i think i've made my point but that, it's very I, that's, obvious, that that's a myth. I, what, what are that's we doing rubbish. here? That is that is dog shit. Don't do that. Don't do that. By the way, just don't do don't carol. Don't no caroling. That's the thing. I think we're past caroling. I'm sorry. I like some Christmas it's, songs, but like on a CD in the background, not as a surprise. In the background. Not as exactly. a, not as not as an ambush. No, it's a, you're making it about you. Like now we have to now we have to pretend that we liked it. I'm just trying to order some, eat some crispy squid over here. Yeah, I've got a fur. I, I've got, I've yeah. got other things to do. I don't. Yeah, no, that's that's dog shit, man. I'm sorry that happened to you. Can you just imagine an era? I guess maybe 50, 60 years ago, when this was a thing, like just because no. it had to start somewhere, right? And everyone was like into it for long enough that it became a thing. So there was a period mm. in our civilization where someone would turn up at your door or would be like in the streets and singing and everyone would stop and listen and be like, wow. And I think as a society, we've gone past that. Yeah. And I think just in, in the defense of caroling at large, um, I think caroling served a purpose, you know, maybe in the twenties and thirties when there wasn't TV and your TV was basically just your window (laughs) and you just looked outside and watched the snowfall or the birds. And then all of a sudden on your window TV, there'd be some people singing a lovely tune. That's fine. That's That's entertaining then because I've, because I have nothing else, but we have, we have playstations now guys. (laughs) Yeah. I'm ratchet and clanking over here. I don't need to hear jingle bells right now. We have, Social media. We have global warming to think about. <laughs> I, I cannot, I cannot squeeze you in with the caroling. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the space. I'm sorry, and it sucks. It's also weird. The, the though. caroling. It's, lame. it's the, lame. The caroling attire is very clearly winter attire. It's beanies. Sure. It's hats. It's knitted jumpers. It's it's. It doesn't make sense in in Christchurch summer. 
it's like surely you're sweating like like this isn't it's just not the vibe everyone else is here in like fucking jandals he just looked like a weird bunch of time traveling pilgrims (laughs) anyway myth that sucks um all right, next myth, real short one. Nick, Christmas cake, it sucks. It does suck. Agreed. Moving on. All right. I don't have any others. I had one, but it was a bit conservative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what do you mean, a conservative? Myth? At, at risk of saying, at risk, risk of uh, speak, uh, seeming like uh, Tucker Carlson over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not sure that I, I got- want to go down this path. I, I saw someone on, on Facebook wishing everyone a happy holidays. And look, oh my God. I get what Nick you're doing. Can't be. I'm doing it. I'm you doing can't it. Be Nick. Serious. I hate happy holidays. Again, it's making it about you. It's virtue signaling. What? Don't like it. Oh, you were doing so well, Michael. And now you come in here with this shit. No, happy holidays hurts I'm no s- one. Happy. Ho- it's still. You're still having a holiday if you're having Christmas. So they're still wishing you were happy the thing that you're doing. You know what's annoying? It's because I have to do one mental uh, leap. Sure. I have to go, happy holidays, (laughs) Merry Christmas. In a very slight way. You're making me do the work. I know you mean Merry Christmas. So I'm just going to do... No, they don't. No, Michael, they don't mean Merry Christmas. Yes, they do. That's the point. They mean mean everything. No. Yeah, okay. Everything. What else is there? Hanukkah? (laughs) Yeah. That's not a real holiday. Okay. So now... Ramadan? Yeah. yeah, That's another one. Yeah. Yeah. That's made up. Okay. Well, I mean, (laughs) we've established your Christian credentials in (laughs) the past. All of this is made up. So um, I don't see why you're picking on those when you've already called out Christianity for being completely fictional. So um, I'm sensing some inconsistencies here. Just a little peek behind the curtain here, uh, folks. Uh, I didn't even really want to say that one. And okay. and then I felt the need in, for entertainment purposes to double down. Okay. And I just did. And that's, that's what that was. I just doubled down. I don't really care that people say happy holidays. I'm just okay. kind of under, undermining the whole M- Merry Myths uh, well, institution. But That's actually more offensive to me because I treat Merry Myths with the sanctity that it deserves, the respect oh, okay. that it deserves. And you're out here throwing out insincere myths like what are we doing michael sorry (laughs) this is for real gripes that matter it's just content baby that's like (laughs) that's what i'm that's what we're out here doing we're just producing content some of it's not that good okay i hate to tell you but some of it's not that good okay if you've enjoyed this episode then please go back and listen to some of our other content there's um plenty of it not much of it is very good but look, we're just out here producing content, so that's, I guess, what we're doing now. Uh, there's <laughs> plenty of ways you can get in touch with us. You can send us messages. You can send us emails on deepfort at gmail.com. You can jump on Instagram. You can jump on Facebook. You can jump on Spotify and listen to our Christmassy songs. Uh, and you can, of course, leave us a positive review or a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And uh, we'd appreciate it. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing the love and and happy holidays to you all. Have you had your prostate Might checked? Uh, not by a doctor. Mm. But, um, I don't know, maybe to. soon. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard to segue, even if that part's cut out. <laughs> just, a, just a strange tonal shift. <laughs> Maybe just cut in from have you had your prostate checked? <laughs> <laughs> just without the pre. Just without context. Um, yeah. Leave a little mystery. Yeah, we should. Oh, it's our favorite time of the year. Michael, oh, Christmas time is here. And can you believe it? Five years running now, we have created Christmas songs uh, for each other as a little gift, both to each other, but also to the audience. You know, and the so, world, and the world, quite frankly, yeah. And uh, look, we've we've refilled our glasses. I'm back with a Scottish whiskey. Oh wow! In the hearts, really stuff. peaty. You would. It says on the front like extra peaty, and you wouldn't think mm. you can taste it, but this tastes like swamp water. It's, okay, it's really, yeah, it, it's a flavor. Uh, I'm jealous. Um, yeah, it is. We've we've started this. I was reflecting on our um, on our tradition that we've established. 
And you know these Christmas songs, they're you know I got the I got the Spotify Wrapped uh, yeah. stats. Yeah. <laughs> from from like the artists, they do a Spotify Wrapped for artists. Yeah. So I, I get the Brokers one and I get the Deep Fort one, and um, you know it says you know you you've 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 this year you've hit all the high notes. They do that kind That's of preamble. Clever. Yeah. Your your songs were listened to by over ninety one people. That's so, actually more than I would have thought. So, like, amazing. to be honest, not bad. And, not and bad. from all over the world, you know, um, uh, New Zealand, Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, part of me wonders who the hell got one of our songs, like, algorithmically fed into their, like, artist radio and listened halfway through and was like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck is this? Is he rapping? He doesn't even sound like he raps. Um, to be fair, that's exactly what my parents say, and they know the full. <laughs> they know the context. context. Yeah. they've had over. They've had yeah. almost ten years of that context, yeah, and they're still like, "What the out. fuck? I do not get this." Yes, but I lo- I love this tradition that we've created. You know, we we put in. I, I'm sure you have yeah. put Dozens in a of lot hours. of like like a, a, like a weird amount, like a weird amount. I've been I've been this year. I've been you know obviously in various different countries trying to work on my laptop and I have been obsessed with the song that you'll hear in a bit. Uh, and just, this is the side of, of me that Lauren has never seen yeah. and is just like, I mean, I'm sure Casey is the same where you're just like, Oh, it's done. And then the next morning you're like, it's completely not done. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to start all over again. Um, did you so have an actual a, restart? I did, but it wasn't oh. as dramatic as I'm okay. making it sound. Sure. But, my point is that, like, there's yeah, there's we, a process. We don't, we don't, we know that we don't have a huge audience of people that listen to this, and it doesn't make sense the amount of work that we put into it. Yeah. But I think in life, what I'm learning is that doing things because they just make you or your friend laugh, that is a great reason to do anything. Yeah, and I think our songs are pretty good. And now, Nick. Which is, this is what I wanted when we first started doing this is to have an album. Now we have ten songs yeah. after this year. Yeah. So I say we close out this as album one. Okay. Well, it's funny and that you say that because uh, our friend Sean said this uh, past week. Uh, I really want you to press this to vinyl. <laughs> So I don't know if you want to spend four hundred dollars to make a limited run of of uh, vinyls of this thing, but like we have ten songs, we have I, Christmas songs, I, Volume One. I think we, I think we ought to. Uh, I think we ought to do that. Um, and were you saying that to me or to like the audience? Like well, just hoping there's a, someone out there that has capacity to do that. No, I haven't looked into it at all. I was like, this is that would cost so much money to do. But if you, that's if the you kind happen of commitment to be listening to, a- to this, <laughs> if you happen to be listening to this and have a lot of money, which I don't think there's a lot of overlap there, um, I I think can you can you just do like a limited run? Maybe just do ten um, and see if they increase in value. I'm not promising that Who they knows? will, but. They could be kind of really cool in the year 2045. Maybe. Maybe. Or there'll be one of those ones at like the back of a record shop where they pull it up for the album art and and then you buy it based on sort of vibes alone, not because it actually sounds like anything, just because it's the fun thing to have like on the shelf. Now, Nick, I don't know if you want to do this now, but I've got some new, uh, just speaking of the Christmas album, I've got the Christmas album artwork. Please. So my good friend Lauren has been working on some 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 artwork for uh, this Christmas album that we're about to put out. Yeah, and I think it's I think you're gonna like it. Please, I, think I, I cannot you wait. It. Yes, if uh, mm-hmm. everyone oh. on the podcast um, listening with an actual uh, podcast player opens up their player right now and has a look at the chapter title, you will already see the updated artwork for uh, this brand new Christmas song. So that is all the work of Lauren. And look, I, I, I'm very grateful for it. And I think it looks amazing. Uh, you haven't seen it yet. No, I'm just saying that now. I'm... I reserve the right to disagree with myself. <laughs> wow. That, that is just a wonderful piece really of like artwork. That. I do. That's, Isn't that it's great? Christmassy. It's Christmassy. It's, it's got that it's a classic. deep it's a thought throwback. unsettling... <laughs> It's, it it really makes you wonder what's wrong with these people, and that's the vibe yeah. I like to communicate. 
beautiful yeah, work, I mean, Lauren. It it looks Christmassy. Thank you, Lauren. It it looks sparkly. I love what you've done to my lips. Um, and I feel like if I saw this in a store, I would spend four hundred dollars for the vinyl. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Laura. Yeah, it's a bit of a throwback, you know, it's to beautiful. like the um, the specs that we or the brief that we gave Lauren was like a little Frank Sinatra Rat Pack Christmas. You know, it's kind of cartoon yeah. in form, but yeah. I think it just hits all those notes beautifully. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful stuff. Yeah, and and all as right. you say, a great capper to to an album of ten songs. Yes. Now speaking of songs, Michael, I think this year it's up to me to go first. Is that correct? Okay. I think last year uh, was my old uh, my VHS gag. So let me send you my new Christmas, oh, and I I don't think I need to set this up in any way. Okay, here we go. Walk in the room with a confident strut With your shoulders back and your head held up A glittery box that draws the eye How much did it cost? Who is this guy? He is a big gifter Swinging that dick around Could ever get close Big gifter, big gifter Trying to cause a real commotion She's flush with cash after her big promotion Oh my god, you snake She says that she's found a deal but you know there's no way that's real <laughs> You just like a nice tradition She treats it as competition oh, You just rolled a boring card She enlisted Paul McCartney No, 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 no she is a big gifter, swinging those tits around. No one else could ever get close. Big gifter, big gifter. Na 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 na. Maserati for everybody. You play nice, but he plays naughty. Na 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 na. You bought cotton. She bought satin. You bought carbon. She bought salmon. <laughs> you bought cod and she bought salmon. <laughs> Big gift. Set a twenty dollar limit. She turns up with Taylor tickets. Whoa, whoa. Na, 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 na. Big gift. Wow. I am like uh, speechless about that. I that brought me so much joy. Oh, thank okay, you. Okay, first of all, right off the bat, they, this is the most musically technical song, and I am I I cannot believe the chord progressions and changes you've you have in that song. That is incredible. Now, thank you. elephant in the room here. Yes, that, that poor choice of words. Words. 
<laughs> yes, go on. Flamingo in the room. Yeah. Um, you used my sister. Yeah, I assume Laura. that's my sister on vocals. Laura. Yep. Laura, now, I, I, I'm very grateful for in a very busy time of year. She um, snuck away at some point and recorded into her iPhone uh, wow. uh, the the second verse and you know the, sung along to this for me and sent it through. Um, she squeezed it in and and it's magical. I'm I'm really grateful of it and she did such a great job. When you can't sing, get a real trained like academy music singer. You don't have to tell me. Um... The, the annoying part about that as as sweet and as beautiful as that melody was and it's kind of like a kind of like a, a like a throwback kind of duet you know yeah. saying something stupid kind of vibes but with yeah. like a surf young kind of almost bibio I saw you, I, was, I heard the I wobble I was going for bibio I was really going I for heard bibio. the bobble yeah um it's kind of had that feel to it but my my gripe is that I mean I could barely get Laura to sing on <laughs> The, the actual the tracks bands. that I had made of of which she was a member. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I cannot believe that you got her to sing on this. She does an incredible job. And I can't wait. I literally cannot wait to listen to that again with the lyrics because there are some ins- insanely funny <laughs> lyrics. This is, what I, this is what you do best. You, your lyrics are always super funny. Thank you. The, I, I like just rep- I like that you just repeat. You've done this a couple of times, but you repeat a, a, just a just a, a, a an incredibly stupid lyric, Cos- <laughs> like just multiple times. Like, we have had was to it, say, I, you I bought-, bought cod, she bought salmon. Yeah, like, let's just repeat better. that for eight bars. <laughs> let's just repeat that for eight bars. Yeah, um, just in case is, you missed that it. is that is genius. Uh, that is honestly, I think uh, it could be your best. Thank you. I, I, look, I aim to beat myself every year. I, if you're not doing this for self improvement and to make the other person laugh, then I don't think you're doing it right. But thank you. This, this honestly, this song broke me. Like I have been w- going to sleep with this rattling in my head. I've been waking up with it in my head. Like I've listened to this and thought about this so, <laughs> so much. I, oh, you know, yeah. Putting it on in the car, walking around, you know, listening to the mix yeah. of it. I also really tried this year to. Like I was, I explicitly sort of in my head wanted to write like a Bibio funk. Like I wanted a groove. I wanted like, uh, yeah, just a, just that feel. And I knew that part of his sound, particularly in 10 was like this kind yeah. of reverb echoey kind of post-production shit. I was like, well, fuck, I'm going to have to try and do that. So well, when I was started to get that, that vibe in and it, and it seemed to be working, I was very satisfied. Cause like, okay, now now it feels like the thing I'm trying to em- emulate. I, I was honestly astonished. Like I've never been able to, I'm not being falsely modest here, but I have never been able to do, a, you know, that, that complex. Uh, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying the melody is necessarily complex, but I know that the chords, there's like a quick succession of chords there that aren't necessarily um expected or regular yeah. um, that I've never been able to do. And I don't even think I've tried because it's too hard. So I, my hats off to you. It's, it's really good. Thank you. That was the one that I was like, I literally just sat at the keyboard and like went insane because it's not natural to me. I'm not a jazz pianist. I don't know chord theory. You know, I had a melody in my head. I actually like this came to me sort of like singing in the shower, this idea and this, and this thing. But then if you can yeah. hear the melody and you can hear what you want it to be, to then go and actually have to do like jazz chord progressions on a piano, yeah. it, I just, it fucked me. Like it just genuinely broke my brain a little bit. Um, it like, I, I messaged you, I think halfway through this process about the chords because I was, I had a melody, but I couldn't get the chords right. And I felt like I was bashing my head against the wall for a while. So I really do appreciate you saying that the, that the chords, you know, caught you. They're or like, complicated, yeah, They're complicated. But it's not. It's not. It's still easy listening. That's a that's a delicate tightrope. Laura threw well out there. some like nineteen seventies jazz fusion funk band <laughs> that a weather report. Wow. I think she said, and I was like, oh, okay, well, great. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is, but I appreciate it. Yeah, weather weather report was a big, uh, yeah. Band in our family. Uh, yeah. That was honestly 
incredible, Nick. Thank you. Well I, done. I appreciate it. I, I feel good about it. You should. All right, I've got one for you. Cannot wait. And ma- maybe I will give a bit of a preamble Please to this. Please do, yeah. You know, like you said, we kind of, with these Christmas songs, we we don't want to repeat ourselves, and I don't think we have done that at any year. And um, there's been one style of Christmas song that I've been wanting to do since we started this, and I think I found it here. Uh, and I haven't done it alone like you. I haven't done it alone. Oh. And, um, and you know, I've been thinking a lot about, like like many people, uh, you know, we've been seeing, you know, the, the Pentagon um, documents released about, you know, UFO sightings and, you know, we're seeing <laughs> UAPs, okay. you know, coming into the, 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 the zeitgeist uh-huh. um, more frequently and people are starting to take it more seriously. And I think there's, there's, a, there's a connection, or maybe I'm asking, whether is there a connection between these lights in the sky that were, you know, being reported and, and, and maybe a, a Santa Claus? Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities there, you know, things that we can't explain, flying, time traveling even. Yeah. You know, how does, he, how does he visit every home in one single night? Well, you can't do that unless you're traveling at the speed of light. Of course not. Um, so, are you ready? Yeah, well, I am, I'm very excited um, to get this going. Michael, uh, do so, you need to know the name? This is Close Encounters of the Christmas Kind. Oh, 
I'm always facing derision, not a politician. I've been chosen for this Christmas mission. Got a black hole in my vision, healthy distrust of religion. But I'm open to a second opinion. I'm sleep deprived, tell me who, what, and why. Don't call me when he's at your window with a sack full of lead. Come and dress up in red. He might be breathing, but you're already dead. And he keeps going and going and going and going to all these houses. No one knowing who the fuck he is or how he's in your home. And they're disinterested, frustratedly so. Stars are melting from the sky and they replace it with drones. I'm driving through a forest, now my car is starting to slow. I stop, step out, blue night fades into indigo. And my flow's so cold, it's making it snow. Falling heavy on my new big coat. Between the trees, I see a faint green glow. I feel a wave of emotion, I'm thrown to suddenly. I know that I was never alone. I see a UFO. And if the proof is in the pudding, I got sweet, sweet dough. I call, I stop, but the aliens go. Track to beam is coming down, and it's a quid pro quo. In a gesture of peace They throw a seat in front of me And I can see it grow And it's a Christmas tree I see the bright star And I start to believe Santa's eyes but rise to my reality I go blind when he starts to speak My life is magnified Amplified, clarified Christ may have died But I'm the real sacrifice God's an alien And life is a lie Do not capitulate Do not comply The more they say that I'm wrong The more I'm sure that I'm right And let me be crystal clear About that fateful night was Rudolph's awakening awaiting me there All the elves had rabies, Mrs. Claus was dead Sun was bright yellow, moon was blood red We all got questions, I want answers instead How about that young C, give it up for young C Fucking hell Guys, oh my god! Yeah. I I went silent because I was just I was just grinning all the There's way through. There's not a lot through. of space for well a, that, but also un- unbelievable, unbelievable. Straight up At the start, I was rap, like, okay, baby. here we go. Clips since we're in brokers territory, and then it just wasn't. Yeah. It went somewhere somewhere completely new. I'm so impressed. It sounded legitimately incredible. Casper, legitimately great. I don't know if the lyrics were you yeah. or him or both, but like that was the lyrics were all him. Amazing. So I just to give a little backstory here. I was I don't have a lot of gear. I was on the road. Don't have a lot of gear, and so I was like really come you know September. I was kind of stressing out about like what am I going to do for Christmas song? I can't. I hate programming specific notes for chords i can't do that for a whole song i can do that for instruments so i found like a beat that i had recorded in lockdown um wow. one of the many beats that i had and i was like i can base it off this and so I'll, the um, beat or like the chords and, and everything as well yeah so the the, the beat you, and the you, chord you had the chords and the progression yeah yeah and it kind of um it's it's changed a little bit since then, but then you know I I was trying to work out what the concept is going to be, and I think even on the back of a conversation that Laura and I were having, we're like, why don't you know it could be like a connection between you know UFOs and Santa Claus yeah. and Christmas lights and yeah. and I kind of gave Crasper a very s- simple short brief, and I yeah. said this is what I'm thinking, you know, go paint on this blank canvas, and he. He came up with this story. He's like, I'm going to make it, you know, this narrative person of like from yeah. from the perspective of someone who's seen a UFO and is kind of doubting, uh, is being doubted. And I, I, he's just, it's, it's, you know, the music was all me, but it, it's all Casper. Like that is yeah, all incredible. the lyrics. And they're so, I'll send you the lyrics because they are, they're, they're, they're very clever. I yeah. Like I mean, lot. I was listening along, but like, absolutely. It's so dense in, in terms of like, uh, probably our longest Christmas song by a decent Six margin. Yeah, almost, which yeah. I enjoyed all the way through, but um, like a lot of, a lot more there than I was expecting. And then in the middle, it sort of hits this kind of gorillas sort of zone where you're you're in like telephone Damon Albarn kind of territory. And then back mm. to this really satisfying like rap synth, Verse outro, like I, I just yeah. There's no, all the like, way there's no structures. <laughs> yeah, there the is a structure. Course. I mean, like that's a fucking rap song. But like, un- uh, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. I, I thought the the production was really nice. I like the the uh, movement of sounds, like left to right. Like you were using the, the channels, the panning. It was a really thank satisfying. You. Thank you for saying that. 
Because that's the fiddly stuff that it's, I'm sure you know. That's the fiddly that, shit. <clears throat> working out that really takes up a lot of time. <laughs> that's so much automation. Yeah. But um, yeah, the- and DSing. I don't know if DSing is uh, oh. part of your gripes, but I, I, God yeah. Almighty, <laughs> yeah, kill me. But the um, I will tell you one brief aside, which is that. Like I said, uh, Lauren recorded her track onto an iPhone because she didn't have like great. You just called her Lauren, around. by the way. Sorry, Laura. Laura, I, that's your fault for <laughs> getting engaged to someone who sounds like your sister. Laura. Um, not an accident. Not an accident. <laughs> Laura um, recorded into her iPhone. And that was one of those things where like it was not like amazing quality. And so like oh. the amount of like post production work. And, and that kind of stuff, like, can take Look, so much time. Casper's as well is from an iPhone. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know. It, it sounds amazing. No. Um, oh, I, I bought I, some fancy plugins. <laughs> I spent a lot of money <laughs> yeah. on this. That's the commitment that I look for. Please, um, please send your uh, donations to Deep4 <laughs> just so I can recoup <laughs> the money from the dollars that I spent on the Christmas. So, yeah. You know, I, I think because I had a lot more the, time... The, the, the tone, the sound of the synths and the bass and the, the like, you know, like that is fucking pro level shit. Like it sounds unbelievable. I probably spent about as much time on this as I did on like Technicolor, you know, like, yeah. I, like just that fiddly stuff to try and make it acoustically sound nice and have like effects in the right place. And yeah, I bought like a, a limiter, which is like, I should send it to you. Actually, there's a free version. I'll send it to you if yeah. you ever need one. Um, and I, just because I had a bit more time, like not having a, a full-time job, like I could, I could do all the, those fiddly things. Yeah. And I think it's like, it sounds, it's probably the most professional. It's the, definitely like the most like laborious one that I've had, but like, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely, it's it more sounds, fiddly in this, like more layers there yeah. it should be crisp. Um, incredible work. I, I genuinely think probably one of your best, um, if not the best, I really enjoyed it all the way through and I can't wait to listen again. I, this is, this is yeah. Christmas It's day. always the best part when you can, we can just like kind of listen to them back and you can, you know, I think, you know, not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but you know, we always include a, you know, some layers there, some inside jokes um, that you can only really get after a few lessons. But I do just want to say, I've already said it, but a shout out to Young C himself yeah, for that. Casper. Because Casper put in so much fucking work yeah. for this. Like it's, there is a lot of this three pages of yeah. lyrics yeah. Um, and every line in there he scrutinized over and we did together. We kind of changed things. So I just want to shout out Casper because he fucking What a champion. It. Yeah. Great job, Casper. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you, Laura, for being part of it, finding time in your schedule to sing a silly Christmas song for us. And thank you all for listening. Uh, we know that your, your time is precious and we appreciate that you spend time with us and uh, hope that you have a great holidays and Christmas ahead. Um, with you and your family um so please uh enjoy the break and we'll see you in don't drink drive don't drink drive we'll see you in 2024 baby merry christmas the 14th of november 2019 christmas. universal christ universal crystal christmas was on the 14th of november 2019 <laughs> thank you siri <laughs> universal crystal christmas is in yeah. November? Did you not know that? No, I missed a missed it. <laughs>